In this lecture, we're going to look at Washington and one of the things that happened during his presidency that he was not too happy about, and that was the creation of America's first political parties. Washington is the only president we've had who belonged to no political parties at all. Uh, Washington uh, didn't really favor political parties. However, they are created because of Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson. By bringing these two men into his cabinet, Washington has brought in very different personalities, which is good in many ways because you'll hear a lot of uh, different sides to an argument. However, they end up having very different opinions and some people will agree with Jefferson, others will agree with Hamilton, and that is how we get our first political parties. Let's begin with Hamilton. Hamilton is someone who really supported this constitution to begin with, and so his supporters will become part of the first political party that's known as the Federalists. Remember, the Federalists were the people who liked the new constitution once it was released to the public. They saw the benefit to having a stronger central or stronger U.S. government. Uh, a lot of Federalists also talked about having uh, the wealthy people really be the ones who were going to be in charge of the government and running things. They focused a good deal on industry and manufacturing and kind of that belief that that will be the future of America is let's get our um, let's get started with industry making things. Remember that Hamilton also wanted to have that national bank and in order to do that he needed to have the loose interpretation of the Constitution. The Constitution has a yes list and a no list for what the government can and cannot do. And Hamilton really focused on that no list, understanding that he couldn't do what was on the no list. That was forbidden. However, he said, I will do everything else. And it was that loose interpretation that says he can make a national bank or he can ask Congress to make a national bank. The Federalists also favored tariffs because it was going to be something that was going to help pay down that $73.5 million national debt. If people are choosing to buy foreign goods, that's perfectly fine. You're just going to pay a tax on it that the government will collect and use that to pay down the debt. Hamilton was also pro-British. He believed that since so much of our economy was dependent upon trade with Britain, we needed to really make a concerted effort to stay on Britain's good side. Let's foster the trade, the relationship that we have with them and continue to see it grow. So for that reason, he is accused of being pro-British. Now let's take a look at Jefferson and what Jefferson really thought ought to be happening. As I said, he disagreed with Hamilton in just about every aspect. And so he is the leader of those anti-federalists and the anti-federalists turn into a political party that becomes known as the Democratic Republicans. Sometimes we call them just the Republicans. They are not the Republicans of today. That political party did not yet exist. The Democratic Republicans are led by Jefferson. And remember, Jefferson was that person with Shays' Rebellion. He thought it wasn't really that big of an ordeal. We don't need to recreate uh, the government, make things a lot stronger. So he focuses a lot on having strong state governments because that's what is easier for most people to get to. For most people, it is closer. Uh, your state capital is closer than your national capital. So if you have a problem, you should go to a government that can fix your problem. And for most people, that is your state capital. That's why he focuses, a, or focuses on a strong state government. Jefferson and the Democratic Republicans also emphasize agriculture. They want Americans to be farmers. That is the goal. Everyone should have their own plot of land and farm. Jefferson also liked having a strict interpretation of the Constitution because he opposed the National Bank. Jefferson will focus on the yes list. He believes the U.S. government should only be allowed to do what it is specifically stated um, can be done in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. If you focus on that, you are going to have a weaker government because they are really very limited in what they can do. The Democratic Republicans are opposed to tariffs because a tariff is a tax. Taxes make things more expensive, and the Democratic Republicans tend to be farmers who do not have a whole lot of money. So Jefferson wants to keep prices down so it's affordable for more people. 
Uh, that's why he is against tariffs. He's also accused of being pro-French. Remember when France approached the United States and uh, expected us to honor the treaty we signed with the French during the revolution, uh, Jefferson was the guy who said, we have to do that. It is the right thing to do. We owe the French people. We should help them. So he is certainly pro-French. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples here. Uh, if we think about the differences between the two parties, let's check out what happens where in the Constitution, it says that Congress has the power to raise taxes. That is very clearly on the yes list. In 1794, Congress put a tax on whiskey. And the farmers in Pennsylvania, as you know, refused to pay the tax. And that becomes the Whiskey Rebellion. Which political party would have been most likely to support the right of the farmers to protest? Remember, farmers, they tend to be Democratic Republicans. So the party that would have been most likely to support the farmers and that protest, they are the Democratic Republicans. Let's do one more example. Remember that John Jay was sent over to Britain to work out a treaty where hopefully he will be able to avoid going to war with Britain. And while the treaty was terrible because the United States is um, going to have to agree to things like Britain is allowed to search any U.S. ship that they think may be carrying illegal goods to support France in their war, which political party would have been most likely to support that treaty? And the answer for that one, we're looking at which party likes Britain, wants to stay on Britain's good side, wants to avoid the war with Britain, that political party the Federalists. Washington did not really care for any of this. However, he is going to, more often than not, act like Hamilton and the Federalists. While, remember, he doesn't belong to any political party, he is certainly accused of acting and thinking more like a Federalist than a Democratic Republican. At the end of Washington's second term, he makes the announcement that he will not serve a third term as president. And so he writes a farewell letter to the American people in which he offers a few pieces of advice as he's getting ready to retire from public life. One of his warnings for the United States is to avoid foreign alliances. It's one of the reasons he did not want to get involved with France. He thought long term that isn't good for the United States. His second warning for the United States is avoid too much debt. Having some debt is understandable, and he's okay with that, but he said, make sure the debt does not get out of hand. His third and final warning for the United States was avoid political parties. Washington believed that political parties were going to do more harm than good. He said they are going to cause jealousies, they are going to incite rebellions, they are going to make people suspicious. Um, and he just felt that all in all, they were going to be negative. If you look at where we are today as a country, we have foreign alliances, we have over $20 trillion in national debt, and we have firmly entrenched political parties. This is not what Washington wanted. But as we look at overall at his legacy, we realize that he set a lot of precedents while he served as that first president. He created a stronger United States one that got through our first couple of years under this new constitution. And he also helped create a stronger United States government because he is willing to loosely interpret the constitution. And that serves as a precedent for future presidents. And with that, as Washington says goodbye to the American people, we say goodbye to Washington.